Super, 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 super. BS. What's up, and welcome back to Super BS. They didn't think we could do it. I got Reggie, Phil, Lehmann, Phil Spence, the whole gang. They said, hey, you guys can't do it. There's no way this is possible, and we totally did it. We got it, guys. SuperBScast at gmail.com. We did it. We got the email. No one said it was possible, but we did it. Yeah. Um, anyways, we are back again. What are the other choices? Tell, tell the, shut, shut up. Tell the, shut, the shut, 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 shut. Tell, tell, tell Dave and Jake what the other uh, choices were. I actually can't remember. I think it was like SuperBS dot dumb idiots. I don't know. At farts. <laughs> at farts. At farts.com. Like, okay. uh, but anyways, I am here. I am Frank Broderson. I'm here to kick butt and take names. I'm all out of butts. So now anyways, we are, uh, we're back. Frank Broderson's dead. Sorry, guys. That was his last words. I really know someone named Broderson. I don't care if you know everybody named so Broderson, okay? <laughs> that guy sucks. I don't even want to know a Brank Broderson. Stank Broderson. Stank Broderson. Stank Broderson. <laughs> You don't you know that tool stank Roderson? <laughs> oh man. But anyways, I am uh, Brian Wagner and next to me as always is Josh Peterson, also nice. known as Jank Jankerson. Jank Jankerson. That, that and then we got on ourself on ourselves. <laughs> on ourselves. He's, he's on us, guys. On our, for honor. On ourselves. Um for honor no, self. he was here last week as Stank Bank, Bank Stanker. Um right. Sin. What's your real name, you fool? My real name is Dave. Dave? We don't know his last name, though. He might be a murderer. Um, yeah, just Dave's good. Dave's oh, good my goodness. Now. Dave, well, nobody will ever know his last name. And we got a brand new guest, first time ever. Super BS. Warm welcome to... Brian Wagner. Damn it. <laughs> no. That's not how this goes. That ended a long time ago. So, anyways, let's try this again. Uh, mm. Some people know me as Stank McMaster. But Damn it. <laughs> my birth name is Jacob Mark Schaefer. You can check out my website at jacobmarkschaefer.com. No, no plugs, no plugs. <laughs> I am on IMDb from the one no, soap no. opera episode I was on, so that's kind of cool. You were on several episodes. I was on oh episode. Oh, my God. No, just one. I was on another name? one, but I didn't have lines, so you what don't get this? credit. Oh, okay, okay. What soap opera was this? Dave's uh, of Our Lives? Dave's no. of Our Dave's Lives. Dave's of Our, of our Lives. lives. The soap opera that plays in my mind every day. <laughs> <laughs> that is my soaps and that I love. Dave's of my life is Dave sitting next to me, and then my father, mm. David. So right, um, wow, Dave is in your life. I used to call Dave all the time when I was trying to call my dad. <laughs> True. So there's <laughs> and I'd be like, "Hey, Dad," I'd be like, "Uh, it's Dave, bro." <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I would pretend to be your dad, and he would go on for 10, 15 minutes. Really you, long. You wouldn't know. And I'd yeah. Be like, and sometimes I was like, hey, I'm your father, and I had you at birth, and you uh -huh. still don't know, and you told me all your deepest, darkest secrets, uh, and I right. fell in love with you. Bold. <laughs> <laughs> Just like it always happens. Bold and the Beautiful was what I was on. One episode uh, oh, no. with lines. I, I was on the second episode. What did you do in that episode? Do you call, recall? I do. I was, at the time, I was working at uh, Medi Medieval Times as an apprentice knight. Oh, so uh, the show came to uh, Medieval Times Castle um, and wanted to do an episode, and... The head knight, uh, Jesse, they asked him if <laughs> who could be a squire and who mm. could act. And he, he told me, literally, he looked out over everyone. And then <laughs> he was like, Jake, I saw you. And they're like, you want that guy. You don't really want anybody else. <laughs> that guy can probably act. Something similar happened when we were deciding if we should invite you on the show. And we looked about the whole crowd of our friends. And Everybody. Said, they all the worked world. at Medieval Times. Though. Um, we medieval <laughs> Everybody times. at Medieval Times. We looked over all of them. <laughs> we, we went through a lot of nights to we find you. Every, every, no, I was, never, I was an apprentice night. I never made it to, to a night. Uh, my wife got pregnant, so oh, I man. had to bail. Right. Some Story of my of other lives. friends were on uh, Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, they didn't have oh, lines. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Kiss Kiss Bang, Bang Bang. The movie. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Wow. Starring Bell Kilmer. So I was on that. That was fun. So, and... Robert Downey Jr. is in that, right? And then I guess since we're talking about video games, I also wrote... We're not talking about video not games, yet, Jake. Right? This is a long intro. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, sorry, guys. We talked like a this. whole three minutes, guys. This is way <laughs> too long. But Nobody I, likes this guff. I no. did write a little bit for, uh, was it Pantheon Rise and the Fallen, which is the new MMO that's, that uh, they're working on. It was, uh, oh, that's it, cool. It failed on the Kickstarter, and then they did another one, and they're working on it. 
And I, Let's talk about this in news. I can't talk a lot about it a lot. Uh, I had to sign an NDA. And then the writing team I worked on with which you all left. <laughs> so if you were to ask anyone that's there now, because they're still working on it, mm-hmm. they'd be like, who's Jake? They'd be like, well, who is this guy? We have no idea. And all the stuff I wrote went nowhere. And just as mysteriously as he arrived, he was gone. <laughs> I know. And first time listeners, second time guest callers, you guys probably heard in our background, we got Cricket Crickerson. He's our yeah, favorite. Good luck. <laughs> He is uh, going to join us for the next couple weeks. We mm-hmm. love him. We Ooh. wish him the best. Yeah. He's um, a big man. Before we talk, before we talk, starting before we start talking about <laughs> what we're going to before we start talking about what we're going to play, we need to do a real Wait, quick we're going break. To play or what we did play. I will I not answer that, that, and I will not listen to, to you. The show, Josh, you know the formula. Badooch. <laughs> If you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games, we can help. Retro City Games in Henderson, Nevada, only five minutes from the Las Vegas Strip, has all your favorite gaming staples, classics, and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves. Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. And we are back. We're finally ready to talk about those games that we played, we loved, and we loved and played. Um, we are all about, as you guys know, anime and land networking. So we are hoping that we got some big news coming up about anime and land. But for right now, let's talk about those sweet games we've been playing. Let's start with our guest, Jake Jakeyson. How you been? Uh, Jake Jakeyson. And Jake Jankerson. Everybody Jake loves Jankerson. aliases. Uh, yeah, Jake, so. Failed aliases. <laughs> no, lovable aliases. That everyone knows and loves. What have you been playing? Even if it's not recent, what was the last game you played and you loved? Uh, <laughs> I'm playing uh, Salt and Sanctuary on my Vita, which mm, Eric, already, Eric already talked about it a little bit. And yes, um, I don't have too much to add. He's absolutely right. It's 2D Dark Souls. They did a great job with it. Um, super fun on the Vita, which uh, we've all talked about how Oh, the Vita, what could have been. The Vita's just a worse version of the Virtual Boy, right? <laughs> That's true, and there's yes. no games on it, and Virtual Boy's the winner. It's awesome. <laughs> no, it's it's a good game. But he's it's right. A it's, it's pretty barren now. What? Okay. You just have a lot of games. Let me ask you this. Uh, what led to the downfall of the Vita? Because uh, so oh, we're on Vita no, now? We're not, uh, I think he was still talking about we're still, SS. Okay, we, we'll, we'll talk about Psalm yeah, Sanctuary, yeah, but we'll, we'll <laughs> sidetrack a little Guys, bit. Guys, we're just Let's... four dudes. <laughs> Celebrating each other's strength on this podcast. <laughs> I love celebrating yeah. my friend's strengths. Um, Sony stopped supporting the Vita, man. That was the but problem. They're still making so, games. They though. do. Third party companies make great RPGs for it, but it's just like now that the Switch is out, I just don't see it lasting very long into the future. Six but, years old, isn't it? I, I think uh, what I failed was games are too expensive. And time. They didn't help. Um, the, like the IT assistance and all that stuff with like putting games out on it uh, it's yeah. not it's not super easy to work with whenever i hear like salt and sanctuary and um axiom verge and all these guys talking about development when porting it to the vita they're always like it was harder to port than we thought really? mm. and i don't know what that means i'm Just, not a, but it's like which is so funny because at this point you'd think game like these people would realize like make it easy to port for your system yeah i don't i don't know what that means you know i don't know how they would do that but it just seems so logical to me. Also, the proprietary memory cards. I just have to real quick bring up that. Yeah. If you're spending 60 bucks on a 32 gigabyte memory card and that eats up like you can probably have 10 games on it. Like I spent $100 on my 64 gigabyte memory card. Is, is it mm. That's a card? lot of money. It's an yeah, no, no, it's, it's proprietary. SD, right? yeah, but it's, yeah, it's Sony specific. Oh. SD, yeah, yeah you so could, you can't buy you like can't an SD get card. One. That would have been great. But I don't think that's the reason it failed. <sighs> I, Tough I, to say. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but okay. So, Salt and Sanctuary, you love it. It's uh, what's it like? Any games else that you play it's, that you like? No, it's two D Dark Souls. Um, what else am I playing? Fez. Fez also is on great. Vita. I play a lot of my Vita. Vita's <laughs> one of the best, man. It's one of the I best. I can only really play on the go these days, uh, since I had a baby. Oh so. man, those babies, <laughs> man, they right right? love. Right? I mean, That's yeah, how it is. Control. Baby on the knee, Vita in the hands, man. Mm. Ugh. You named your daughter Vita, right? I did. <laughs> wow. After first and middle name. <laughs> Vita, Vita. Vita, Vita. Vita, Vita. Uh, so okay, so you've been playing Fez, which is awesome. Uh, have you played 
I feel like I talked to you not too long ago and you were playing Fallout. Uh, I know well, a while, that was a while ago. ago. I'm playing Half Life Two for the first time. Ooh, oh, such a great that's game. That's a great first one. First time playing it right now. I beat Half Life oh, One man. for the first time ever. Whoa, two that's great too. Oh man. That's so a... I beat Half Life One first time ever like two months ago. I'm playing Half Life Two for the first time ever. Uh, loving it. If I had to be, give it a critique. Uh, critique. A critique. That's the correct critique. Which is like a, a critique. Yeah. <laughs> um, all about our syllabus. And this is like from you know, after playing Halo and all these games that I'm sure emulated what was so new and fresh at the time. Sure. It's just um, I get to like the driving levels of the boat and the car, and Animal like people, no, I bet. they're not. Yeah, that's. I'm just like. I bet this was great at the time. Yeah. But like, sure. it flips, and I'm like, I just want to go flip it like I did in Halo. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm like, no, it doesn't work. I'm like, I have to throw a grenade or I have to go. <laughs> Are you like running into and just like, like these like yeah, to... it's just like especially when you go fast, it loses control really quickly. It's not the best, and it's kind of long level. Yeah, like the levels that. are long. Um, There's still some good things about the game though, right? Like oh, like the soundtrack and. Uh, the soundtrack's tight. It's, yeah. It's like, Super instead stars. of like, man, like, it gets funky. Mm-hmm. Like, it gets like, not quite what I'd think it would be. It gets right. like, like, techno, not techno, but yeah, it, it there's, just there's some like, electronics. It's got some yeah, it's it. like, yeah, instead yeah. of like this like, you know, co- like overall arcing of a soundtrack like hey, and everything. We yeah, know, it's nothing it's like super, that. It's, not all it's symphony, like it's all very possible. sparse and very very yeah, situational. Yeah, it's like suddenly it's like oh, you hit this part of level. Let's go to the club. Mm-hmm. The yeah, question yeah, yeah, on, like, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm down for this this like soundtrack right now. The that qu- was tight. That was fun. And the weapons are still great. The, the question awesome. on everyone mind, everyone's mind though is, did you get to Ravenholm? Yeah, dude. Uh, I don't Ravenholm. go there anymore. We all know you don't go there. Oh, uh, dude, Ravenholm was tight. It was super <laughs> yeah, tight. The gravity great. gun, and getting the, <laughs> the saws, and just like Ravenholm was. Is it called a gravity gun? What's it called? Yeah, it's called, called the gravity gun. Gravity gun. Yeah. Although, although Ravenholm is amazing, the best level though is when you go to that that prison on the beach. What is that like? Oh, uh, that one's crazy. Not City Thirteen, awesome. but it's like precinct or something. I love I the dune buggy stuff. I think I just got there. That dude, that part is the best. Because I just finished the dune buggy stuff. And then you had to like travel by foot over the sand, like with the ant lions, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah ant I did that. And then I got the ant, ant lions following my will with the squishy ball. Yeah, that, that's in the prison then. And and then yeah. I just got to yeah, the prison. Yeah, okay. So oh, that's I'm just there. That's awesome. Did you get the orange box? Yeah. Did you get it on any of the sales? Because there's been like nonstop sales recently. No, I'm a dum dum, and oh I goodness. didn't get it on the sales. And not only that, I've been waiting for the sales, and then. Right when I think of it again, the sales closed two days before. Yeah, because I've been wanting to pick up. Um, it was on Xbox what is 360, it? right? Or the you can get on Xbox 360, PS3, PC, Wii U. No, not just joking. <laughs> Wii U. That's a joke. There's nothing on Wii U. <laughs> there's a game I've been wanting to get um, on Steam, and I didn't get it yet. Um, maybe go to Dave, and then I'll, I'll think of it. Okay, well, we just gave out his real name. Sorry oh, about sorry. that. No. I said my real name earlier. <laughs> Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, just did I didn't listen at all. Right? I yeah. still know him as Stank McBank Stank Stankerson. I just, I just didn't give my full legal name and, and uh, social security oh, number. We're all about legality here. <laughs> so, Davy Poo, what you been yeah. playing? Okay, so I, for the first time in my life, have actually played more than one game in a year. So I played, um, since we last spoke, uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. Ooh, yeah. Which yeah. is really great. Looks good. Uh, Oxenfree, which nice. is also really great. And then I tried playing uh, Shadow of Mordor. I played it for about maybe 35 minutes and then the man decided that i wasn't going to be able to play it that man what should i which of those mm. games should i should I dive into first the man brian uh i i mean you did you've done the order pretty good but you actually beat oxen free i right? did beat oxen free we're actually on our second playthrough of it nice um, man what do yeah, you think of it i've actually never played that one super fun um i think my only critique of it Jake, right? <laughs> okay. you know, my only critique. still not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> still not sure if that's theory. Uh, how do you say critique? critique. Um, my only my only critique of Oxen Free would be um, it's just a little janky. The movement is a yeah. little rough, but it's such a small p- component of the game. Like it really doesn't matter. The story is super compelling. The writing is for the most part pretty good. The voice acting is good. The soundtrack is killer, and um, the amount of time it takes to, to beat it is is just really fun. Like you can you can probably sit down two solid nights and just beat the game. 
it's kind of like binge watching the equivalent of binge watching Stranger Things, something like that. And the most important news out of all that is it's come to Switch, which is the most important Has console. Has it actually? Wait, wait, wait. It is Stranger Things or Oxen Free? <laughs> uh, hopefully well, both. Video Netflix streaming services. Yeah, yeah that, that is a thing. Yeah. We'll get to that in the news. But yeah, Oxen Free is one of the mini games that we will hopefully get a chance to discuss in the news about Switch. Um, yeah, Oxen Free is great. What do you think of Ori and the Blind Forest? That's Love one of my it. favorite games from Xbox One as a like exclusive. That's mm-hmm. probably my maybe my favorite exclusive i like so halo fun. a lot um yeah that's just yeah. the artwork yeah the artwork so is really great jake you gotta play it man it's a pc game also it's on my list yeah it's really that's good. all i do is I, i've switched to steam yeah man you and the rest I of those traders i got bastards. so tired of buying console mm. and then and that's false and then boxing <laughs> like when i boxed up my wii no don't do that in the garage mm-hmm. no i was like how many consoles am am i gonna keep buying you should keep buying all of them so I was like, I'm gonna switch to Steam, and I did, and I and I switched to Steam, and then I switched to handheld. And like, he regrets every do, minute. Do you have to keep? Don't you have to keep upgrading your computer pieces to play like your video card and that to get? And don't you have to keep spending eight hundred dollars every time you upgrade it? <laughs> Tell the truth, man. Don't yeah, lie about the on how PC master race well, you are. Well, I just it's fake news. when it starts to get like not good, I just play the the older games that aren't as graphic intensive. Okay. And then you know what I mean, like because yeah. there's plenty of games that are like Age of Empires two, like, everyone's like, favorite game. Um, Math Blaster. Math Blaster, uh, Reading Blaster. All of those. Chips Challenge. Yes. <laughs> uh, Everyone's Alter. favorite games. Josh, to your Hyper point. Hyperlight Drifter. Gosh. That game is that, awesome. Like, you don't need a, you know, that one, it's, it's tight, and there's plenty of games that I like that aren't super intensive. I mean, I'm playing Half-Life 2, and I'm loving it, so. McDonald's. It. <laughs> We're in a Vita, <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, Steam commercial. Gotta put McDonald's are on great, there. But they're, it's lower on my list of like necessary. So, so you don't really care that much if it's coming out. Like... I like when it looks pretty. Yeah. You know what I mean. But it's lower on my list. Okay. So story and gameplay and all that stuff. And Josh, JP, Yo. Jay Palderson. I'm sorry, hey. I'm interrupting you. Skip it, Josh. Hey. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to know anything about what you've been playing. You want to know about your love life. So games. please talk to us about that. <laughs> <laughs> This is a new podcast, okay? Well, her okay? name is Cindy. The she has nude. a mustache. Nice. So, guys, <laughs> don't reveal so what? much. He huh? has a type. Yeah. He has a type. Um, <laughs> hey, girl, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I just came up with that joke. Wait, what was the joke? <laughs> Didn't said, hey, joke. girl, Michael. It's a joke oh, I came up with. From The Office. Yeah, from The Office. Oh, I love that show, Michael uh, Scott. Michael Scott. And Michael Sarah uh, as Michael, Michael Sarah, Scott. Yeah. As Michael Scott. Love it. That's my favorite scene. What's, is Michael what's that show about? The, <laughs> the boss. Um, no, what have you been playing? I have been playing a few things. I I started The Witcher. Okay, that's good. The first one. I like how we're the starting. Witcher three. The oh, Witcher three. Yes, author. yes. He the, started the book series. The, the guy who foolishly opted out of getting payments oh, for the video games. I read yeah. some of his short stories. So. Are they good? I saw it at Barnes and Noble. A little I long. To pick some of them up. <laughs> like ten minutes or so to read. I don't. I don't deal with that type of s. <laughs> um, so I've been playing The Witcher. I haven't had a whole lot of time to dive into it. I also played uh, The Evil Within. Nice this game is terrifying. Mm. Yeah, well, it's good. That's what you want to do right before you go to bed. I have your nieces and nephews watching it with you. I have right? honestly, yeah, I've never Jake's played a game that Vita, I've, Vita, Vita. I've never played a game that makes that actually like scared me like that. Like there's there's stuff everywhere. It's worse than Dead Space. Okay, well, well, we all know how much we love Dead Space, so it's worse than that. Um, what else have you been playing? Um, that's it. So, so I've, just I've been those playing a lot two of two games. So. <laughs> how far are you even within? Are you almost done with it? Fifty percent? No, I, I'm pro- I'm just an hour into it. I've, um, I've not. What's had the exact much... percentage of completion on that? Josh? We're gonna we're gonna have to know that. Every so single. We're not gonna move on until yeah. we know. But, but about four percent. And what Xbox if I were to guess. One game? Okay. Is that on Xbox One I want to know? <laughs> You're not a real gamer. <laughs> How's your Halo Wars uh, 2 progress Ooh. coming? Uh, Halo Wars 2 is finished. But the first I, time. I He's going to go back. I'm, I'm going back and I'm, I'm going playing back. through Halo Wars Definitive Edition. Oh, the nice. remaster. Oh, excellent. And <laughs> I'm not very good at it is what I'm learning. Is that I don't even want to finish it. Well, nice. I'm sorry. Going well, I'm going to go ahead. Flippy floppy. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, how are we feeling on Prey this week? Loving Hooray! it, hating yeah. it. Loving yeah. it, hating it. Loving it, hating it, hating it, loving it. Guys, they did it. They asked me. This is the first ever. Josh never asked me what I've been playing or what I care about. He's always how a jerk. Load times. Everyone knows <laughs> that. Those Prey load times. Uh, Prey load times. I love them. I love load times on consoles. That's why I do not own a Switch. False. This is all a joke, guys. I own a Switch. 
No load times. I've actually been playing a lot. It's been two weeks since we recorded. I've been playing more Horizon Zero Dawn, which is not much, maybe two hours in. Really cool, but I haven't been feeling sitting in front of my TV so much. So the only two console games I've played on like TV consoles are Battlefield 1. I don't know if you guys got a chance to play that. Uh, mm-hmm. Really good game. Um, the, it's just like the sense of scale is amazing. Is it like Salt and Sanctuary? It's it, it's actually a Salt and, <laughs> it's Salt and Sanctuary it's exactly. It's a sixty four um, person <laughs> Salt and Sanctuary Vita uh, reboot port. Um, it, but yeah, no, it's it's just crazy when you're playing a map and there's thirty dudes trying to take up this place. You mm. don't know they're all dudes. I know that for a fact. They all all their names say dude, and they got a picture of a boy right next to them <laughs> and a Human stick male. figure. <laughs> And they've got their pictures by their faces, okay. and they're all smiling, and okay. they're all kids. That's why you um, play it. That, that is actually why I play it. I love it. Um, but I've also I'm been playing... It. I'm oh, nice. <laughs> I don't hear that this enough. This episode is brought to you by... <laughs> oh, McDonald's, please sponsor us. I just can't wait to get McFlurries all day, every day. Um, uh, all day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. Um, no, I've been playing, though, uh, Goner on Switch. I did I talk about that last time? Mm-mm. Okay, it's it's kind of like a... It's a roguelike. It's not kind of. It is a roguelike. Mm. So I've played it probably for three hours, but after you die enough times and no progress carries over, you're like... Hey, as cool as this looks, I don't really want to play it anymore. A 2D platformer, get a bunch of guns. You can keep the items that you get, but it goes, it's procedurally generated levels and ah. I don't know. So I got that because it was 10 bucks and I want to play something on my Switch. I got Mighty Gunvolt Burst. Have you guys heard of that? Mm -mm. It's, did you guys ever hear of uh, a concept game called, oh my goodness, it's a guy who made Mega Man. He made Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's trash, from what I've heard. This is like a two D <laughs> demake of that, and and that's I mean that's just what I've heard. I don't really know much about it, but um, it's a two D demake of that. Never even read a review about yeah, it. Yeah, I never. I mean, I just heard it. A guy on the street was walking <laughs> can, by. He's can you like, uh, what a demake is. For so it's like instead of Mighty Number no. Nine, which is kind of like a two point five D game where it's newer graphics on a two D scale, and there's things in the background. Oh, like this a Donkey is, Kong uh, Country Returns type thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Um. This is more of like a original Mega Man style graphics. Okay. And there's some cool things. <laughs> nice. Um, there's some cool <laughs> things where, you know, like you can, Tell you go that. through and fight the bosses and you can choose, like create your own weapon. However, they don't really explain anything to you. So it's kind of intimidating. So mm-hmm. I played that for a little bit. I beat Snake Pass, a game that I mentioned a long time ago. It's like a platformer where you just like, or snake and you roll up and down things um it's really rad oh, the cell phone game snake a cell cell phone game that's right. a snake uh, it's snake on jack, all yeah. uh motorola phones <laughs> um wait razor or sliver ra- both okay. and oh oh wow and i beat cave story have you guys heard of that game yeah we talked about it on the podcast okay last cool time. i couldn't remember how but i didn't beat it at that point i think i just started yeah, playing you it just um, started it i don't remember you talking about it and i've listened to every episode all well, ten of them. The, Jake's the not fan you, is man. here. The fan is here, guys. Uh, we can't let him I'm down. The today. fans are here. <laughs> the fans. Are here. Oh, sorry. Well, now we got two producers on the show. Um, no, Cave Story is amazing, man. It took me about five or six hours to beat it. I loved every minute. Um, I am. <laughs> wow. I'm at this something. point where I just want games to be on the Switch so much so that I'm like looking at games that I didn't even want to buy when it came out and like, well, I guess I'll buy this because I just want to play something. So as I've complained about only once ever for right. fellow listeners, I've never complained about this. Mm-hmm. Um, there are not enough games on Switch, and I want more games on it. And I, I will not. I'll only just say this real, real quick. Virtual Console. Uh, <laughs> First time I've heard. He actually has a contract. It. Yeah. In his yeah. contract, yeah. it says I he says not every episode. Not I must virtual say. Virtual. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They signed that contract today. I'm willing to break it for you, the listener, because I love you. <laughs> Um, but no, we actually need to. That's, and that's us. So. <laughs> you know, the listeners We're are right here, here, guys. Uh, I, I guess we did everything for them. We did it. We won. Um, we won life. <laughs> we should uh, probably take a quick break, Rooney, and then uh, come back and talk about some news. Badooch. Hey everyone, venture into the pop culture cosmos today, where you'll hear our conversations on different topics within the world of movies, TV, video games, comic books, technology, board gaming, and more. You'll also get a taste of some of our other shows within the cosmos as well. So come on and join us each week as we delve into the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the pop culture cosmos. And now we 
we are back and ready to talk about the news. We're bringing you those sweet licks that you've loved and known and loved. And we got new segments brought to you by Davey Boy over here, also known as Stank Bank. Everybody hey, knows that <laughs> name way better. We're a video, we're a video Stank, game podcast, by the way. Uh, we are official. actually an anime land <laughs> podcast. We, we only... We talk about anime and how to watch it through land I mean, networks, this, this not just, on the internet. This literally just opened like an adult film, so I just want to remind <laughs> I just you guys to know. <laughs> I just want you guys to and know something about licks so that we're just, here uh, for licking yeah. and gripping and all the things that you love to do. <laughs> you got the sour end of the that. This that, is for you, kids. <laughs> what's that hedonism video? That YouTube video? Have you guys seen that? Which They're, one? They interview a guy who's. <laughs> Who is attending Hedonism too? Oh, it's, of course. Why wouldn't you? you guys that <laughs> no, I've oh, never. Oh, it's like a sensation. Oh, well. well okay, we'll later. put it on the Did podcast. It viral, Dave. That's <laughs> like, uh, it is viral. Okay. Hey, for you guys listening down. out there, just respond in the live chat what you think about the Hedonism <laughs> two video. Um, okay, right, so hey, up. we got some new stuff now. We're gonna talk about some stocks because we know you guys love them and we know you guys trade them mm. and we know you're all millionaires. Stop, all yes. of the listeners are millionaires and we love you. This is now a buy and sell and trade and hold podcast this is what it's about guys yeah, we're changing socks. it rebooting rebooting again um okay yeah give us the rundown man it's um, a good show well right. i mean something i guess of note sure is activision is. blizzard stock has has gone up pretty significantly in the last month what's um, the numbers i think i think the number is something like 5.8 nice. percent in the last uh, in the last month which is pretty significant um considering that you know it's, it's a pretty tough market right there especially for uh for triple com- triple a companies you know we're back. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. so we are back to talk about what? some stocks. Uh, last we heard, you mentioned some bad Activision stock going up? I did, yes. It went up close to 6% in the past month. Um, I think we mostly, or the, the people on the street, as I like to call it, are mostly nice. attributing that to um, the Overwatch and the, and the eSports craze that's kind of Overwatch League sweeping the niche. Um, you know, other than that, there really isn't a whole lot of, uh, of, you know, crazy news going on in the video game stock world. Nintendo stock has not gone up too much considering that they've, you know, released the Switch, sales are good, you know, and they've they've announced the uh, the new virtual thing. What's it? Virtual the, Boy. The Virtual Boy. No, I was kidding. The mini SNES. Yeah. That's and, do, uh, do you think their stock will go up when that comes out? I don't know. It, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a weird industry. So it's I'm not really sure. I thought their stock was going to go up a lot more in the past month than it did. So it's well for one thing, stock markets are just sort of volatile, and are really um, really contingent upon the political environment as well, and just what's going on in the in the world. Like the video game industry, as well as almost any other uh, sector, went up considerably once Donald Trump became president, which I don't think anyone expected. So political. So who even? So who even? Fake knows? news. That's fake news. <laughs> oh, guys, we've this been is the onion. We're, we're a day. subsidiary of the onion. Now. We're a subsidiary of the onion. We do stock, uh, oh. fictional stocks. Fictional stocks. So wait. So you said Nintendo was at an all-time high? Uh, well, they're not. Okay, I I guess they are. They are at an all-time high. Of not, five dollars, right? A share. No, no. no. <laughs> so so they're currently trading at thirty-nine eighty-seven nice. a share. Oh, um, man. their fifty-two week high is forty-four dollars and thirty-three cents a share. But their fifty-two week low is seventeen dollars and forty-five cents a share. Get on that. Which is all like pre-Trump, pre-Trump stuff. So so their their stock has gone up considerably. Post Trump. Uh, you know, over doubled. Nice. Um, yeah. So I, I guess you could say their stock is at an all-time. And high. that's all because of politics, guys. We've done yep. it. Politics yeah. did everything. We know yep. all about them too. Mm. So, As a professional political. So what political. did what did Russia have to do with this? Uh, and question. we love <laughs> this is my favorite thing <laughs> is to divulge into things that everyone knows and loves and everyone is actually an expert on. So let's continue this. Okay. All right. <laughs> but uh, is there any other stock news that's really sweet and no? I, I, think, that, I think that about covers it. Okay, I like I like hearing about sweet and tart stuff. But anyways, um, about stuff that might change the stocks. Jakey Poo, you mentioned something cool. Well, not sure how much it'll affect the stocks, but Rumors. I was just—I mean, we all saw <laughs> Sony put out that patent. No, we for, didn't. For the explain it to me, I don't know the, what it is. For a new handheld. I mean, what? Yeah. What's it gonna we do? Just talked about it. A no, little we didn't. Bit. no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Did? Should I? I mean, very little. No, not last like weeks ago. You guys okay, talked well, about. Okay, well, it's probably a I lie. Call that. So I Probably just Eric read and... a little bit more about it, and I went and looked at it. It's it's just a sketch of it, and um, it looks kind of similar to the Switch. Actually, it looks like kind of like a tablet with two like old school PS controllers on the on the ends. I don't know if they detach. It wasn't part of it, but I was just curious that it looks so much like the Switch, and I think. 
think they're watching the Switch and kind of seeing how it plays out. Do you think that's how the PlayStation... When the PlayStation 5 comes out, which someone wrote an article about that today that they predict is going to be out 2019. in 2019. But do you think mm-hmm. that's what it might look like or could look like? Well, I don't know what it's going to look like. What I'm hoping is, I mean, we're kind of reaching a point of like diminishing return in terms of like our phones and like computers and tablets are like, they can show super good graphics, right? Right. So I feel like I, I kind of want it all of them to kind of go with the switches you know yeah. i want take it on the go i want it to be on the go and i want to plug yeah. it in and i don't think that's what the next one for sony and microsoft's going to be you know I yeah think that, i wish but i was, want but, yeah. but were, i want whatever this following one weren't they trying to do something like that with the psp go do you remember that they yeah. had some kind of mode where you could play the ps vita they had ps vita tv yeah. and they and the ps vita is set up to be like a handheld ps4 where it does remote play but it doesn't work great because you need really good Wi-Fi and you can't. It not it doesn't have the exact same amount of buttons, so you have right. to use digital buttons in place. I am totally on board with this, Jake. This is what I want: is it more games cool. that I can. It's, I mean, it seems like it's what, what, what everyone would want. Yeah. In term, right? I mean, is it a patent application or was it was it approved? Did they just file the like, hey, we want to get this patent? I well, that's a lot of big words, Dave. Uh, I don't know. None of us are lawyers here, including yeah, let's, you, let's Dave. Let's assume that we're not lawyers. <laughs> about yeah. lawyers. Or as I like to call them, liars. That's a right. joke no one's ever heard yeah, before. That's a good one. I love it. <laughs> no one's ever heard that joke. That's crazy, right? Just asking um, questions. <laughs> yeah, so. questions lead down dangerous roads. That's true. Um, okay, so there's a game that came out that we know and love, and we've talked about this before. Um, it came out this week. Joshua, you bought it. I'm waiting for mine to ship. What is it? Final Fantasy Twelve. Oh yeah, the Zodiac. <laughs> Final Fantasy New Twelve. New topic yeah. for the podcast. We have never talked about a Final Fantasy before. Can you explain what that series might be? Well, it's kind of like Tales of Rosaria, <laughs> except that it's not. <laughs> it's not anything like it. These are not as bad. <laughs> <laughs> these are not jokes anyone's ever heard. No oh, I'm so glad. Are. I'm so glad Donna is not listening. Yeah. I mean, now, now that we got Donna, this out of please. our system. <laughs> He's my boy. Now. So, uh, no, did you get to play yet? No, not yet. It, it's I, it's still sitting on my shelf. I haven't had a chance to open it yet. But um, I'm I played <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah I played really some of it at e, when I was at E3, and it, you know I, I didn't see any like noticeable differences. But did looked, you play the original? I did play the original. Oh, okay, I thought Final Fantasy 15 was the first one. Is that the first one you beat? What first Wait, Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy 15 is the first Final Fantasy. I no, no the first that, one that Josh beat. Oh, I thought, no, no, yeah. Zelda was the first. Oh, Breath of the Wild okay. was the first Zelda Sorry, game guys. I ever played all the way through. I just love Final Fantasy so much. I want to all tie it there. Okay, Breath can of the Wild was the first. Can Zelda. we hit on 13 too? Have we covered <laughs> a few oh, more times? Yeah. I feel like uh, it's exactly <laughs> what I wanted in a sequel. Uh, just throwing. What, what do you quick. think of the whiny emo boy characters and <laughs> oh, we in love these games? And we've never done this before too. That's what makes it so. You've never done it with me. <laughs> and we need to do it with everyone that's on the all show right. all over and we over again. Skip um, okay, so there's other gaming news before we talk about just some games. There was uh, another PlayStation game that was announced. Well, yeah, they announced uh, Gran Turismo will be out on October 17th. Now, Josh, give it to me straight. Is this a racing game, as you young kids call it? <laughs> yes, yes. What do these young kids like to do in these cars going so fast? Well, I guess you just kind of get in these cars and you press X until you go around corners too fast. It's and actually make normally it. this R2 button or the right trigger. I'm sorry you I mean, failed. Sorry. Like that that's South Park quote. When he's uh, <laughs> Cartman driving NASCAR, he's like, I'm going to go fast and turn to the left, son. I'm going to go Patrick. <laughs> But I guess what what my question to you guys is I I know I don't know if you guys play racing games but do you think that Gran Turismo like it's it's been an on and off game over the years Uh, do you but with Forza Seven coming out do you think that Gran Turismo even with the new VR capabilities in Gran Turismo do you think that it's enough to dethrone Forza I don't think so that is a very technical question I don't know if any of us are actually like qualified to answer this because i don't know how many of us play racing <laughs> games not. but i from what i understand from the people who have their ears to the street as we like to call it in the news world that's a stop um right. they <laughs> they think that forza forza is just a good series and it's it kind of does the thing so do people care enough about gran turismo is the real question yeah like I mean, is it it's been gone for so many years do people really care when a game leaves for 10 years at a time they, and then comes the, back? I don't like think... Like Mortal Kombat people. Yeah, I, I guess. Like, they have Mortal Kombat to come out there every are, There year, are some though. franchises that do that, but I mean, the last Gran Turismo, like, 
with each new one, they try to reinvent the game and they put all in all these features that they're like, oh, this is going to be really cool. And then you start to play and you're like, this, this sucks. This is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like they had a whole, the last one they had a whole section, like half, 50% of the game was racing and 50% of the game was coaching race car drivers. Weird. Yeah. Can you text while you're driving? Like well, that's life? illegal. The police will come and pull you over. <laughs> so in the, the police game. will literally pull up outside your door. And if you do have you? A, a PlayStation Eye, they actually will watch to see if you're texting when you're playing. <laughs> too. Josh, do you regularly play Forza? The Forza games? Yeah, I do actually. Did you play Horizon 3? Forza Horizon 3? No, I don't play the Horizon games. No, Those I'm are like the fan. good ones. I played, the, I played the first one. Do, do racing games sell very well? Cause uh, I think they do. I, mean, yeah. I might hey, have a pretty down, big market. The hey, you throw a fast, I used to. You throw a Fast and the Furious expansion on those games and people will eat it up. Uh, that's true. One of us has a brother who may or may not love racing games. I yes. don't want to give that away. You Two people here have brothers who love racing games. Well, one of them is here in spirit. Yeah, Donna's brother. Oh, and Donna's also brother. My brother. Yeah. Loves, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, Donna. He also loves fighting games. Those are two I games I don't. Yeah, Mario Kart. Mario Kart is, as that, Donna said, the counts. one game to it, love. Josh is Forza an exotics game, or is it more of a like a custom Need for Speed type game? No, it's it has everything. Like you, you oh. can race muscle cars, you can race exotics, you can build and paint, you can customize your own paint job, and you That's can cool. sell it on the marketplace and stuff. In Forza, do you, is it an open world type of feel like the most recent Need for Speed games have been, or is it more just straight up racing? You like Forza Horizon has is an open world, so you basically yeah. you mm-hmm. there's like you go to a race festival or whatever it is for each one, and then you can actually drive around like states. Like the first one I think was Colorado. Oh, cool. You drive around, and then all the races are at different points on the map. But as you're driving to these places, there's like barns hidden in the brush and stuff, and you can find old cars that people abandoned oh, to add them to your garage. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's it's a fun game. I mean, there's just there's so many of them. It's hard to keep up with. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Maybe really. Um, there is a game though that's getting into beta first on P- PlayStation, but uh, it will be on Xbox the day after. Destiny Two. Did any of us play Destiny One? I dabbled a little bit. You you did get a play? I, did. I dabbled. Okay. Did you play Josh? No. Jake. Negative Ghost Rider. Okay. It is. Uh. It's okay. It <laughs> plays cool. really really well. It's. Yeah. It's I polished. found it to be pretty boring after you beat the main story. But I really like the gunplay in it. Um, but yeah, the beta starts next week, and that's kind of huge. That might be one of the biggest games coming out this year. Isn't Besides... it sort of a false name, though? Destiny 2? Yeah. It's, it's really just an expansion of Destiny 1, right? It's not the like game... an EverQuest and EverQuest 2. Yeah, it's it's going to be like building on that. But the, mm-hmm. the strange thing is, so originally Destiny was pitched as a 10-year game. A mm-hmm. game that after 10 years, you'd keep your character, and the story would keep evolving. Like a oh, wow. That... <laughs> Because of the problems they had with Destiny 1 and kind of the reception to it, they are ditching that. So Destiny mm. 2 starts with a total reboot. Your character will not continue over. Oh, right. None of your guns will come. And they, they put something in the story where it's like, oh, our bases were destroyed and all yeah. of your stuff is gone and everybody stole everything. But, you know, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people love it and I did love like the way it handled and i enjoyed the multiplayer quite a bit but can you dance though can you uh, still dance you have i dance buy parties. all those, <laughs> those emotes those are premium dances okay you can you leave you girlfriends Destiny? behind i play it as a titan which is, is like the tank, main right? yeah tank character did yeah. you did you play as a hunter well i guess i played Dave, as, a, did you? as a warlock oh well that's that would suit you you are a devil worshiper so <laughs> <laughs> as his uh world of warcraft uh character undead undead warlock, warlock most demonic did find out about that oh i would never tell my mom okay <laughs> I wanted to love you, okay, as okay. a brother. Uh, wow. Thank you. So, as a brother lover. <laughs> um, so I'm your mom's brother or am I your brother? I, You're my brother lover. Probably both brothers, yeah. I guess. Uh, I don't know. It gets complicated. So, Jake, we heard some news recently, some very large news. Um, pass. pass. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on a friend. Lifeline. This is uh, <laughs> that the Nintendo Switch was getting something called a, a video streaming app. Have you ever heard of one of those? A vidrio stream. A vidrio. <laughs> vidrio? Does, I don't know what vidrio is. It's kind of like you put a VHS player inside of your Nintendo Switch oh, and it <laughs> plays multiple VHS. Takes, mm. It's kind of crazy. Did you guys know about this? Yeah. It's a brand new thing. Uh, I think they got a, a thingy, an appy, as they like calling them, appies. Mm. A VHS um, app? Drinks and apps. A VHS app okay. called right. Nico Nico. Um, which is, it, is really from it's Japan. Called, it's called Nico Nico. Yeah, it's oh. called Nico Nico. Are, watch, is uh, all the content on there going to be in Japanese? Is I the hope. question. 
I hope. <laughs> wait, wait, so so it's not Netflix. It's a it's another. App. Yeah, Netflix isn't on there yet. That's oh. crazy. Okay. Wait, is that true? That is true. <laughs> what Netflix? Why would is on there the be Wii, Netflix? Though, right? Okay, this is a Nintendo Switch we're talking about. A highly evolved console. Fail. It doesn't need Wii, a virtual even console. Even had Netflix on it. It and doesn't Hulu. need a virtual console. Okay, it doesn't need uh, your Netflixes or your Hulos <laughs> or your uh, Amazons. Oh, your Hulos. <laughs> <laughs> your Netflixes. <laughs> Or, um, right, no one has any of those. In. Yeah, no, this is I feel like Nintendo's <laughs> run by Cinco. <laughs> they are yeah, a Cinco product. <laughs> There's a guy he you know leaves his basement every once in a he, <laughs> ten just, years. He just messes with it, with the public. He's like, okay, he's like you know what they video love? streaming service. You don't expect Netflix. Okay, let's do something no one's ever heard of. That Japan I'm, only. I'm friends with the owner. Okay, Nico, Nico, let's do that. <laughs> Nico, Nico. Now it's it is backwards, but it does give me hope because it's been what four months since Switch came out. And we haven't even heard if Netflix was coming onto it. So this is overall good news. Um, I'd say just news. It's just news. No, this is <laughs> overall a, great news. This is life changing. <laughs> All of our listener is clapping right now. That's bad. <laughs> this listener is clapping right now. Okay, he's getting up out of his chair and starting that slow clap. Well, we're both so, I, don't, I don't know what that's. We had a mean. third listener. Okay, I didn't yeah. want to tell you guys this. He's hey, there. Do you know Netflix is like eight billion dollars in debt? They say they're not going to. They're not going to turn a profit for like the next Shut seven years. Up, that's wow, it's crazy. Really? Yeah. They say that they're spending all their money on getting content, content from yeah. people, and right. then they hope to finally start turning a profit in like seven years. Amazon just started profit. Well, yeah, Amazon took like twenty years. Yeah, to turn a profit. but they have they you gotta have, have the foresight to see. They them. have other venues though besides video stuff, so it's. I still think Netflix can make it happen if they can start making good. Sh- uh, we talked about it last month. Like a Netflix original used to mean like this is gonna be awesome. Yeah. And then that stopped happening. Yeah, and it's then just I'm bloated like, and now. Then, and now that's now, bloated. I don't. I don't want to invest in new stuff. Now they're on for two seasons. So and they kind of <laughs> like Sense Eight, that terrible show that no one liked. That's actually a joke. Everybody seemingly liked that show, and they canceled <laughs> it after two seasons. Is that like, the show? Is that the show where it's a really gnarly cliffhanger at the end? Wachowskis. Yeah, they're gonna. To be fair, they are giving them enough money to do like a Christmas special or something. No, 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 they, they, like a Star Wars they, Christmas special. Like, they did a Christmas special. It's it basically a, it's like an hour and a half. Porn. No, they're doing another one though to wrap up the show. From what I heard, it's because like they canceled them abruptly. It was a very expensive show. So so was Marco Polo. Yeah, and that's why they that cancel it, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's do a quick rundown of the sweet, sweet news, which is Nintendo Switch games that are announced this week. We got a whole bunch of randos that never, no one's ever heard of. We've got an Oxen Free. We've got a, a Bliggity Blork. Um, <laughs> a Hoozy What's a, It? A Whatchamacallit. No, but they're, they're honestly like, Dr. I don't... Seuss games? I don't even remember <laughs> half of them, but there were probably, in the last two weeks, 20 to 30 new games announced for Switch coming between this and next year and they're all like indie games but i think the gold rush has begun this like, this scares me though this is like how rush. the wii had some good games on as, it first as long and as i get got M&M, oversaturated as long as i get m M&M go-kart racing i'm okay okay that's the one <laughs> yeah. game i want m M&M go-kart racing from wii yeah. to come back to switch that's the game i want um but no it's, it's... Game we all want but don't deserve <laughs> <laughs> we don't deserve it guys i if we're maybe really good like, are there unlockables in that game like a peanut <laughs> m&m and the like peanut the peanut and the red are actually of course M&M. the normal ones as the green girl can we get it? the christmas m&ms are there special yeah, Santa Claus unlock? in it. i can't reveal all the secrets yet okay i've been talking to the developers they've been working wow. day and night they love it it's their favorite product <laughs> what about a california raisins are we, game? where are we on Ooh. diddy kong racing 2 I uh, love it. Actually, that's a serious a... question. Has there been any talk that that's even a possibility? I think the, there's I legal think things going on. It would be foolish not to come it. out with Diddy Kong Racing. I, I think I think multiple parties own rights to those characters. I think Rare still owns some peeps. And me, I own the right. rights. Yeah, so why some peeps? <laughs> I, I own the chicken. Deal. Can we get a, a, a Sony <laughs> Marvel deal here? I, yeah. I, I paid a premium for You're that liar. chicken character. <laughs> <laughs> I will fix it today. I, uh, Just doing my job. I own the chicken. Pop Everyone knows that. Shot. The chicken. guy wearing the overalls. The uh, big what's his chicken. name? Uh, starts with a C. Right? Fat Albert. No. <laughs> Uh, they couldn't think of a bear name. Drumstick. So just, drumstick. drumstick. Is that really the name? That's really his name. And, oh, and nice. Silent, Silent C. And, and What's the... TikTok, right? <laughs> TikTok. Uh, yeah, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok's the alligator? Wait, no, that's like, the, like, that's the mouse. What's the alligator's name? Crotch. 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 I think it's Crunch. Or Crunch. Crunch. Or Crunchberries. Dude, that game is so hard. There's Banjo, Timber, who I named my cat after. I mean... 
Tip the tap, best character. The turtle. Conquer was, bad for a day. Was, Is Timber fun. the mouse then? Pip sees the, the mouse. Okay. I love them. Um, Can two the badger. Be going on What's a the podcast? badger's name? I, 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 I don't know, man. I would assume What's the badger's so. name? He has a yellow hat. No one ever played him. He's, He's terrible. the yeah, most he's popular character. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old Brian player. Okay, all right. So we, before we started talking about Diddy Kong Racing 2, we were talking about Nintendo's plethora of mediocrity that was unleashed uh, upon the market. Yeah, on the Wii. And we are probably going to see that again on the Wii. Okay. Um, we're going to probably see that again on the Switch. I want to talk um, about Oxenfree more if you all want to hear it. Yeah, I'm okay with talking about that a little bit since we heard it's going to be on the Switch. Which I love, well, and I'll probably play it on there. Where is this devotion to the Switch? You have? Here's the uh, idea, ever though. Since Brian bought one, so I loved the Vita. Uh, Sony decided, hey, you know what? I'm only going to make Tearaway one of the best games ever, and then I'm not going to make games anymore. And I hate them for that. Mm. That's why. That's why we bash them, okay, guys? It's nothing to do with anything else. The we alligator's name was Crunch. Love. Crunch, Captain Crunch. I knew it. Um, I just came up with that Captain Look up Crunch. The badger, no one's ever Josh. Even heard of that. That's, that's the most important. There's an one. elephant named Taj. Yeah, he's Taj? the he's like the he's the bad host. guy, right? No, 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 no. Oh, it's Whiz Pig. A cat Whiz named Pig. Timber. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's a, a badger? As a Diddy this Kong, is for you. <laughs> Diddy the balloon. A, a Diddy Kong fan cast. We really need to know all Dude, of the names. Of oh, Con- Conquer? Is that who you're talking that's about? No, Conquer's okay. the squirrel. You dummy. One of, one of my favorite games. Game. Bumper? Is that who you're talking about? Flu. Bumper. Maybe bumper. Because when I had the flu, I was home from school oh, I love that for game. two weeks straight. Yeah. I rented Diddy Kong Racing. And I rented uh, the Devin Sawa, Jonathan Taylor Thomas movie. Devin um, Sawa, my wife what's, loves him. What's that? What's Jun- that movie like? Born to be Wild? They're not Born to be Wild. Like Jungle to Jungle. Like Wild oh, America. I wish it was Jungle Wild to Jungle. America. It's not a uh, Man in the House, right? No, it's <laughs> not Man in the House. It's Wild America, where they tour. They, they, they like do a road trip across the country, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas is like driving. You can stop talking about it. Oh, it's just so good. Did point. you rent them from Blockbuster? <laughs> I did rent them from Blockbuster. That's what we're all wondering. And that is yep. the plot of Oxenfree, right? That's why you're yeah, telling it's, it. it's the plot twist. <laughs> Actually, what I did want to say about Oxenfree, though, is yeah. it has replay value. You mentioned that when you were talking about what you played. Yeah, but you didn't ask me to follow I up. You just, didn't. You just you got your like list of things, and no one can talk about. I what love they lists. Want to talk about. Okay, I love lists. Every every listener in this room knows that well, I love every, every I just listener because you can have this replay value. Have That's you played Fez? I've eaten Pez. And Pez are the nice. <laughs> or the Rings Pez, Pez over there. Nice. You like Pez, and it has great replay value. What is Pez? Uh, it's really good, actually. It's an indie game. It came out on all systems like 2000, a couple years ago. Uh, 12. Phil Fish. He's really class A. Everybody class loves him. Class A. Class A. Class um, A. It's like a 2D oh. game, but he mm. gets a, a hat that lets him... Uh, you press L R right, and it mm-hmm. switches, and you can rotate the screen, so that's four oh. dimensions. Oh, cool. And, it, and you solve puzzles that way. But it's super pretty game. Super good soundtrack. Uh, disaster piece, I think, to the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, Disaster piece, same Fantastic as Preston as Hyper Light Drifter. It looks oh. super pretty. Yeah. Um, it's super, like, when you fall, you just appear right again. So, like, oh, yeah, it, super right, quick. You're, you're praying it. Playing it, it's just and like, you're you can, <laughs> you're, I pray to it. <laughs> and I play it. I pray to it. Fez and Jesus right there. <laughs> With the, just the uh, hat. Is it on Xbox had, One Arcade? It might be on Xbox One. Xbox One. Um, yeah. But it was on PlayStation 4 and Vita. And mm. uh, it was on... X, originally came out on Xbox 360... Phil Fish, which I'm really bummed out, he had some issues with people on Twitter, and he is an interesting dude. He, he made works. a really, really cool game by himself. Well, not by himself totally, but for the most part by himself. He did make a really cool game. It, it's super tight. I think you'd really like yeah. it. I Off topic, it real quick, did you guys watch Indie Game the movie? I did. That is a really good Netflix watch if you haven't watched it yet. Is it a Nico Nico watch? It's a Nico Nico watch only, actually. Sorry. <laughs> I misspoke when I said Netflix. No, what do you think, Jake? That's something that we both have watched and something that Yeah, I like Netflix. Uh... No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is, is that movie good, though? I, I, no, I enjoyed I the movie. It, it, it shows you know, the lives of some, some developers. Um, Super Meat Boy? Super, Wait, what? Sh- funny enough, it follows three developers with that all had successful games. Yeah. Um, Why? Well, I've been funny at this. And I remember, <laughs> successful, <laughs> I remember reading um, the developers of Poncho, which you guys might not have even heard of. It's no. on my list to play. Um, Secret Ponchos? Or... Just Poncho. Okay. I used to wear uh, Poncho BS. Um, <laughs> so they came out with a game and I, I read their like their story as they went through it and pretty much they got screwed and then <laughs> lost all the rest of the game. When, oh, it, it ended up being hmm. kind of a crappy thing what happened to them yeah um 
the game, and the game ended up being pretty short. It's out. It's on Steam. I I, I want to buy it. It's on my list. I've been wanting to play it because uh, I thought it looked pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they were talking about how like the the movies followed these guys and all their games were successful. Did well. Yeah. But it's like, but for every, but yeah. it's like these guys and everyone yeah. they know, it has not gone. Just like through. any other it's industry. Just, yeah. I mean, some games are gonna succeed, and many, many, many more are gonna fail. But um, but I. I that, like it because I like seeing the lives and and yeah. the, of the the developers. I like I like I do that same thing I do with authors. I love reading about their lives outside of the authors because I, I feel like it gives me a better grasp on their work. Yeah, the production uh, cycles a really interesting thing, especially it's, when you're it's finishing. Just called, it's called indie game. Indie game, the movie, okay. and they actually have like a, a sequel ish because it was a Kickstarter film. They have like it's a triple A, like name. I don't know, exit loot or whatever. It has it's DLC. A AAA. DLC. It follows, it's DLC. It follows guy, okay. the Halo developers, Assassin's Creed, and uh, you Eric would love it. And they're or like, Donna. "We did it, guys! We sold a hundred copies." It's just a bunch and of like six-year-old <laughs> men in white suit or yeah. black suits. It follows the CEOs of Ubisoft. <laughs> oh my god, and Microsoft. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I just, they uh, try, all they're trying to make is a thousand bucks, and <laughs> only a thousand. Bucks. <laughs> they probably make that in a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, no uh, Those people, you should, all that money is publicly available. You can look up what they make and publicly traded. But ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we get to our biggest topic of the night, I want to talk about wow. the Nintendo Switch phone app, which is going live with Splatoon Two. I knew you guys thought. Ooh. What should Nintendo Switch do? They want to do online for the first time ever. What's the best way of doing it? It's creating a totally separate mobile phone app that you have to use to interact with your friends online. And that's is how it, you is call this the people. one that you have to have like an additional piece of hardware and there's yeah, wires going yeah. everywhere? It goes from well, your phone if you want to your talk headset to, to the console. <laughs> So this is no. so this is after assuming you've navigated through the lengthy process of even adding your friends onto the Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo, whatever. are you screwing? <laughs> so right, so this Nintendo, is, we know you Nintendo, listen. Nintendo, you're <laughs> a character from South Park. <laughs> so this Nintendo, is, we know you listen. <laughs> haven't we talked about this on the show? The hardware. We talked about the hardware okay. when it was announced a few weeks ago. I, it just the the phone app is going live. Mm. I'm interested to like see it because from what I heard is it actually keeps really relevant data it keeps like hey the matches you played who you played with what your win-loss ratio is and they sell things it. that yeah sell it to all the google <laughs> farmers um but no it it does stuff that not every game shares with you and it, it's cool that at least they're doing that it is ridiculous that you have to have a separate phone app but yeah. hopefully they'll make it cool or it will like go through the games and they'll do something interesting with it but um let's do a real quick one last break before we talk about the big topic oh the night Hey everyone, if you're in the Southern California area and are looking for the best way to improve your home, look no further than adding some always green synthetic grass today. Whether it's creating that awesome backyard that's kid and pet friendly, or that punting green to work on your golf game, Always Green provides installation and landscaping with only American-made products such as their famous synthetic turf with advanced drainage technology and backed by a 15-year warranty that will have your yard looking great for a very long time. Always Green also installs retaining walls, custom lighting and driveways, and the most beautiful stone walkways. So if you live in the Southern California area, what are you waiting for? Financing is also available, so call for a free estimate today. 714-614-7814. That's 714-614-7814. Or stop by their store at 16772 Wanda Circle in Huntington Beach and get your home looking great with Always Green Synthetic Turf and Putting Greens. A proud sponsor of Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanican Media, and the PCC Multiverse Channels. Anyways, we are back, and we're Skadish. better than ever, <laughs> and we are... The, don't, don't we use that? That's trademarked. It's a wushu finger um, hole. That's why you say badoosh, which is not trademarked. I actually checked that. You can't trademark a word. I trademarked all the words. <laughs> I trademarked Elder. I trademarked mine. <laughs> I trademarked Microsoft. <laughs> um, so anyways, I want to know your guys' opinion about the ever-evolving games, how games are getting patched and how they're changing life. When I started playing games years ago, and we, we've kind of discussed this in some ways before, but I really want to get in the nitty-gritty of it. When we used to play games, you bought a cartridge, put it in your console or a disc, 
you played it it was done the game never changed put it back years later it's the same game mm -hmm. um the thing that made me think about this was wait I, are you segueing into the fact that we might get a sonic and knuckles dlc we are exactly okay. segueing into that we are actually <laughs> unveiling that we're the people we got the nda we're doing it um right. They said, we got the DA, got disclosure the agreement. Yeah. <laughs> um, the they just wanted us can. to disclose this. NBA, WNBA. Somebody please disclose this. Someone knew what these things were. We were um, talking about. Uh, but no. Can we have a lawyer on the show? Uh, uh, we do need a lawyer. Still out on liar. <laughs> we don't know anything about these lawyers. I don't know who you speak of. But um, Horizon Zero Dawn, it just got patched. Right here, Dave. He's talking about Dave. <laughs> Oh. Don't, guys, oh, sorry, I'll have to edit that out. I mean, stink um, bait. <laughs> stink bait. Yes, that is my profession. Everybody knows yes. him as professionally at work as Stank Bank Jr. Yep. Yeah, Jr. Professional <laughs> Stank Bank Jr. Stank Bank Jr. You're, yes. He's here in the flesh, man. Um, yes. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn got patched, I want to say, either this week or last week, where they added a new game plus mode. I, I think a harder mode? I know they did for Zelda Breath of the Wild, but... Anyways, they changed the game significantly, and that's just kind of a normal thing now. This is the game came out on February 28th, I want to say, or 27th, and this is, what, almost four months later, and the game's changed a lot. I mean, we talked about Mass Effect Andromeda getting patched multiple times. Um, I just want to know what you guys think about the idea of you buy a game a year later, it's going to be a totally different game than if you buy it day one, and maybe for the better. I, I don't mind it, but I, I think that you know, like we talked about before with Mass Effect Andromeda, they're they're being rushed to put this product out. And I think now they can put product out before it's ready to, to fully be played and still patch it as they go. I don't know if that's something that we all are on board with, but it gives them a, a, the capabilities to basically put out an unfinished product and like a Bioware. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Josh. I don't I like it in the sense that you can add cosmetic changes to it or you can add different game modes, things that don't materially change the arc of the story, things like that. But when you when you rush a game, when you when your CEOs are screaming at you to put a game out that you're not happy with and you know you're like, oh, we can just patch it later and you change the ending or change some significant aspect to it. I think that Fair is response. I think that is one taking advantage of that system, not using it correctly and insulting your buyers insulting your buyers saying that oh our, our purchasers will still will still buy this game even though it's rushed and junky and we'll just fix it later it's like the george lucas of, of video game development it's like et for nintendo <laughs> et for <Yeah>. nintendo <laughs> exactly and, but what about mass effect 3 then are you talking about that specifically i am, I am where... talking about mass effect 3 i think mass effect 3 was also a mistake they were they succumbed to the terrorists of internet fanboys like that it was yeah. Or was, how good they are as yeah, people. Yeah, it was it was so, it was social terrorism. And why? Okay, so if you if you're making a painting or if you are writing a song, and you know you shouldn't be influenced by by people who, you know who who you don't know who have no impact on anything that you're doing after the fact, making you retroactively change something that you created and you felt positive about and strongly about when you when you put that out there. It would be like you you put out a song, you release it, and someone says, that song's dumb, you should change it. Oh, okay. And of course I listen to them and I change the song. <laughs> I, I, uh, just, I just think it's, I just think uh, it's ridiculous. It, it is, but that's like the nature of the internet too. It's the same yeah. thing with like film reviewers. You have people go online, and if you notice on Metacritic, you go to see a movie, you have four reviewers who hated it, and you have like 300 like regular people who liked it. The reviewers always outweigh what normal people like to do. So it's yeah. kind of it's just the nature of the internet. The now. loudest voice. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Ugh. it's kind of I mean that is how things are changing. Barf, I barf, may have mentioned right? this previously, but just in case I did, Kanye West's last album, The uh, Life of Pablo, it he actually changed it three times. He literally like changed the album. I don't know what he changed. I only heard the final version. You don't know. But, I oh, he know. sent me the first two. <laughs> how did, Jake, how, what man, were the I circumstances of the person. change? Did he change it, release it, and then changed it? Yeah, he changed it. I don't know if he changed it based on peer pressure or he wanted different songs or he added more songs, but I know that it was actually a different release. And yeah. I, I'm just curious about this world that we live in where because we're in like a digital age, you can change anything you want and nothing is – not not nothing, but many things don't have the same weight. You can yeah. – if you make a mistake, change it. Mm -hmm. And there's good things about that, like we mentioned with Mass Effect, where it squashes some bugs. But I, I don't know. I feel like as a, a you know, if you're a buyer early on, if you bought Horizon Zero Dawn day one, it's not necessarily like a, a bad thing because they just added modes. But 
what if you, you know, four months later, you don't want to go back and you don't want to do the things. I mean, you essentially like bought a game that's kind of different. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, I think what they did was very, you know, small and minor, but other games have changed a lot. Like, uh, I think it was, uh, torment tides of numenera mm-hmm. if you want to access the patch content they suggest that you restart the whole game that's like yeah and that was three months I mean, after with, with they the patched intention it of making it better though making it play better removing bugs and they added character they added stuff though too so it's but like i, I get it's all it all supplemental though it's it's nothing that changes the story or changes the art i mean it may change the story I mean, I don't, materially but yeah and i'm not I against think, torment too well but. it's also like relevancy like if there's something like game makers game developers they want their game to stay relevant so like say mm-hmm. there's some kind of social movement happening like with mass effect they're like oh hey we need to you know the we had pride parade so we need to make more uh transgender homosexual characters like it's just yeah. it's like it's a so it's socially they want to say socially relevant i'm sure they're not going to be the last game to do something like that yeah too. and, I, I'm and o- nothing against that yeah. but it's like it's well when it's forced yeah, yeah i'm okay that, with that i, I, I just guess. think yeah, that it's just done poorly i just think that the artist should hopefully want to include people but their last say is kind of what should be the case because they came up with it in their minds like Mm -hmm. i i don't know i i'm just you know we've played games for a long time this this table is filled with oldies okay guys (laughs) i know we're lying to you saying we were teens hip we just started (laughs) games on iphones but uh no i mean like i miss the days of like chrono trigger and games that probably had mistakes that would have been fixed but that are like hey the game is done I'm not going to change it. There is no way to change outside of mass recall or reselling a new copy. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I miss the days of a day one purchase being the last like purchase, like not needing to wait in again, mass Effect three in my case, not needing to wait three weeks from the patch in something mm-hmm. that everybody on earth wanted because they la- left the Mass Effect 1 character creator faces oh out of Mass Effect 3 <laughs> and now we don't play Mass Effect 3 anymore because right. we waited so long. It, suck- <laughs> it sucks too because like you have these games and the moment, not only do you have to install them and that could take anywhere from two to four hours to do, you also or have one to minute wait. Or that's good. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> you also have to wait for them to install all like the, yeah, the, pat- the, the day one patches yeah. that come out and that yeah, takes yeah. even more time. Well, I don't know. I to me, this is this is a tool, and just like any other tool, can be it's a tool, right? Can guys? be abused. <laughs> can, be, can be used for good or can be abused. He's a tool, and I think we've already talked about good examples of it and poor examples of it. And it also comes back to how you view video games. Do you view them as a product, or do you view them as a piece of art, or some sort of hybrid? You know, and it, if you view it purely as a product, there's really no harm in doing this. It's like it's just it's just a piece of hardware that you give to somebody that they use that they exploit for their own entertainment and then you know the company is like hey we're making it better we're making it better responding to feedback responding to peer reviews things like that and we're making the product better but in in terms of looking at it from a piece of art it's it's abusive because it it causes the people to rush it the product or the the piece of art is poorly manufactured and rushed to market and you shouldn't change something that you that you put out and this is you know all it's all like the star wars remastered stuff you know no one no one liked that those were all changes for the best (laughs) (laughs) it's just embarrassing it was you didn't like the disrespect that george (laughs) lucas showed uh the original anakin skywalker when he changed (laughs) oh that was that was probably my slap in the face all the editors who have made that i can't all the ewoks that they digitally enhanced i can't java in the hangar new hope that scene was actually it, that, yeah, that, that was kind of because they, they, they filmed was... it back in the day oh, with so the intention of, of bringing it. So I, I will let that one slide. That one I'll I'll I let that one too. slide. But but Jake, what's a game that you've played recently that has changed? Do you can well, you think of any? Again, I'm Name a little... one that's changed poorly <laughs> and one that you changed that you like. No, and I see, on all the is, changes too. I'm a Go different because for a while now, I for years and years, I don't buy a game new. I wait, and it's just like. I wait for it to come out, and I wait to see what changes they may or may not do. You know what I mean? And wait for it to go on sales. What you mean? Both. We never talk about sales. <laughs> well, too. I have so many games. Like don't listen to our previous episode. Um, the only game I bought brand new was Fallout Four. Before that had been a long time, and then I and then I wait, and I don't wait till the first DLC comes out. I I wait till all of it's out and done. And mm-hmm. then I buy like the pack, like Mass Effect Andromeda, right? And, You're right. gonna keep waiting for the single so, player DLC. Uh, so so it's weird because like I'm, I have enough, I have a bunch of other stuff going on in my life. Like 
I write a lot, and that takes up a lot of my time. That would be game time, and, and um, we'll cut that out. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You're right. Play games. But my point is, is like I don't know if I'm the best, you know, case study on this because I'm more than willing to wait to see how the game finally pans out, and then if it's if all of you guys and Eric and everyone's like, oh, it ended up not being too good. I'm like, check off my list. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm so, same way. and I think there are a lot of gamers like that and I, I, I especially think as you as we start to get older and older I and just as life I mean Dave knows with I mean when other time constraints coming up more and more I think you guys as a might teenager, see too. 18 like we old. just I play less games Jake's my dad. I play so many less games already so the ones I play I'm like this has to be good. No totally. I mean you're so driving you cars and you smoke cigarettes I, I so I get how it is. Between work <laughs> And, and smoking lighting, cigarettes and vaping. Uh, and then my baby, in that order. <laughs> Text <him. laughs> Yeah. Taking, taking snappies. Uh, Prioritize. I'm just like, I can only play a handful of games a year. And I'm like, I well, guess okay. in a way it's kind of cool because I'm like, sweet, what were the best games? Of yeah, you, you, can, you can still speak to the to a game being changed, though. Like, does it bother you that games can yeah, be changed no, post-release? No, I don't. I don't like it. But imagine if you spent... So you did buy Fallout. How I did quickly buy Fallout did you buy 4. it right when it came out? I bought it for on my... Uh, Xbox. Did you buy it though, like when it came out, or how long? I bought it like it was the next the day of. Okay, so like that game, it wasn't as substantial as maybe Mass Effect or a few of the other ones we mentioned, but it did change quite a bit in within how like so? patching. Well, well, they fixed. I can't remember what they fixed, but I remember they fixed a ton but of stuff. But they're fixing like they, things. Like, how is that a bad thing? It's not. But you paid sixty bucks for this product that you thought was done. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying well, it's a bad thing at least necessarily. Doing it for free though. Yes. At least you're not paying for it. Yeah, I agree. I just I, we're not like you said the target cases, and I do buy a lot of new games. But I want to get back to Jake real quick about this. Is like if you bought this thing and say you played through the whole thing, and then say you say you had infinite time, right? Say you're this kid, you play through the whole thing, and then a week later they fix all the bug things because there are a lot of questions. Really, sell me on this. What am I? I'm, no, no, I'm just kidding. How old no. am I? <laughs> no, what I'm saying though is like. You, they fixed all the stuff a week later. They had all the bugged quests, and you finished the game. You put it down. You realized, hey, I'm not gonna be able to finish these quests. Is that cool that they did? I mean, it's cool they fixed no, it, but you got screwed yeah. out. Of, you had to like play the whole game, you know? Like, but you're, I mean, you're right. We all want something to be a done, done, completed game. Yeah, but that's not where it's going. I get that. I just uh, at least for the bigger companies and. I mean, I understand from a business standpoint. I understand why. I mean, it lets them test the waters uh, when they release a product. I get that, but from like a, a gamer, I don't like it. Yeah, and from like some of the standpoints, so like Mass Effect Andromeda got critically panned for the most part, and a lot of that was buggy quests. Like they patched in story later. Mm-hmm. Like I know this is an extreme case, but yeah, patched in story. Yeah, that's yeah. that's rough. I think I that's think you're rough. right. I think Mass Effect Andromeda is the zenith of terrible you know, rushing to market and then patching it later. I think, yeah. I think we can all agree that that is probably the worst example. But games are much bigger than Chrono Trigger. You know, games are a lot bigger. There's way more people involved on it. There's no game bigger than Chrono Trigger. That's actually a lie. <laughs> well, well, Chrono yeah, Trigger is larger than life. Like Fallout 3 was a pretty big game, and mm-hmm. when it came out, it, it was, was pretty game. solid. But yeah, there it had was to have been bugs. Yeah, yeah the, the, Bethesda doesn't have a good track. that I remember. Bugs, but... Uh, <laughs> No, I, I was one of the people who was lucky. I played Skyrim on Xbox 360. I almost suffered no bugs. Dude, but my I lo- Skyrim froze so much in loading screens. See, like, that's a crazy thing. And I heard that from tons of people. I know a that's lot of why people. I wait. Yeah. You so know, that's, that's... Even, if, even if it was a, a pretty solid game, they're all going to have bugs. At first, So, yeah. like, even if I bought a game, I, I, I will generally wait a couple of weeks because that first patch will fit. Fix yeah, but a lot. That's just smart. And I and I get that. I just and that's just me being awesome. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm going to buy. Right. I'm gonna buy the new South Park Day One. Mm-hmm. Uh, South Park uh, fractured butthole. I'm going to. Wait, how's it said? Fractured butthole. <laughs> uh, I'm going to. Uh, what was the last one called? Butthole. Okay. Um, oh, the last one. Stick of truth. I'm gonna buy. Uh, game, I'm gonna buy Mario Odyssey. And Nintendo is not mm-hmm. as much of a culprit when it comes to this. But mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna buy these games Day One. Um, cause I really am excited and I want to play them and I want to be there and know what's going on. I don't want to wait till some person gets to write, Oh, you were unhappy with the end of uh, fractured butthole. It's like, uh, I got to skip all these new stories cause everyone's just trying to ruin and spoil the ending of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it kind of bothers me to think, well, I'm going to buy this game. I'm probably going to get the worst version. If I waited till it went on sale, months later Mm -hmm. then i would be getting it not only cheaper but probably a better version and that to me is 
is kind of backwards crazy logic. Like, hey, I'm gonna sell a game for 60 bucks. It's gonna be the worst possible version of the game. And if you have the patience, you will get a better game. So it's like, screw everyone who pays full price. Like, we talked about this last last week about games have not gone up in price, even though inflation has changed drastically. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to keep reiterating yeah. that, but I, I just, I don't know. For me, it's I, just something I want to bring up because I, I, I think I it's know. an interesting topic that that people have to live with now. And yeah. now that patching is so easy, it's something that just happens. It's, it's I don't a, think it's it, going to go anywhere. I think it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be how they do it's a it. Thing. It kind of sucks, though, because like with Prey, like yeah. for reviewers yeah. especially. Like Some if people couldn't finish it. If, yeah, but if you're reviewing the game and you have a situation like that guy from IGN who scored it at a four because he, couldn't, he couldn't literally the couldn't game. finish the game. Not because it's hard, just because he couldn't. Hmm. So it, it's kind of a double-edged sword for them. So I mean, or something? No, the game actually was so bugged he couldn't even get to the end of it. Like, it just it bugged out in certain areas. And he really liked it. And if you read his review, it was like, hey, this is awesome, this is awesome, this is awesome. But the only thing you see is the review score, four point whatever, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's like, hey, I can't finish this game. And to me, that's, quit. I don't know. Like, quit. quit. Well, and, how and, rare is that, though, where there's a game, there's a bug in the game that keeps you from beating it? Isn't that pretty I rare? I feel like I've read that quite frequently like, in this does last your, generation. Does your quality but... of life go down drastically by buying this game on day one? Like, no, do you, are you it's committing not, suicide? It's not like a, a humanity it? thing. It's just like, yeah. a, hey, I feel like I would rather have a game postponed an extra couple weeks mm-hmm. and it get patched. And I get why they can't do that because there's millions of well, players. And but... sometimes, you know, they need to release. They need to release. To like millions yeah, of they got their quarters because... And... That's when they find the path of the bugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't yeah, always find true. the bugs yeah. until you release them. I, I totally understand the pros of this mm-hmm. way, and yeah. I, I'm not against it. I, I like all the quality of life changes, mm-hmm. but we have a friend, I won't name names, that is right now in the hospital who is unable to get a Wi-Fi patch for Zelda, and they patched that game several times with quality of life changes, and now mm-hmm. he just has to play it without that and that's like oh man it's it is not a big thing in the grand scheme of things yeah but it sucks that that's the case like well, if he okay. could get a patch but the I, game would be better i just don't see what the problem is because it's like at least they're fixing it like because if this was if this was chrono trigger 100 years ago it's just like oh you just play around it and you have to like learn on the I playground guess, no, the right I, way to play around it i understand and i understand that from ocarina of time the yeah. the water dungeon or water temple or whatever yeah, you could you could break the game by if, yeah. you, if you go too far in that i just i don't know i i totally understand yeah. all the validity to it but i still think that never happened to me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Player, he uses player's guide. He I got player's it. Guide. No, but I saw I that for people, and it never happened to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I you know that's just something I feel like is a good thing to discuss and think about because if yeah. if we don't keep talking about this, if gamers don't like ever decide to stop that, then people are just going to keep releasing more and more bugged games. You know, like yeah, it's if, what's going to happen. Well, I mean, Mass Effect Andromeda did not sell well, so no, I, I think, mean, things I think like that's that, a message. I think that, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it's going to show them they're going to find a range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like what happened range with ET was okay, but it still didn't sell. No, 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 it's, it's there's gonna be this range, and then <laughs> they hit it with Andromeda. Yeah, yeah, and then they're gonna be like, oh, okay, well, we can release X amount of bugs now, and like yeah. this is a good, like, yeah, they've learned don't patch in story. Unfortunately, yeah. Mass Effect Honestly, tested that's the my biggest there. one. <laughs> you beat it. Yeah, I, love, I finished he it. He beat yeah. it before all the patches, they, so they he's a perfect it. test case. They tested it with like the most anticipated game, like yeah. well, my most anticipated game in this era. And yeah. they tested it on Josh. And Josh primarily. Yeah. I was the guinea pig. <laughs> I was like, hey, can buy we get it? this <laughs> one <laughs> idiot to buy the game? We will be set for life. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> we got a live one. Anyways, we're going to keep it quick, and we're going to cut it short. If you want to talk, quick and hard. Quick and hard. <laughs> um, How many likes we getting? We are getting not stop likes what? and not not stops, but non stop likes. Uh, chime in on the bottom of the chat, please. Tell everybody what you think with a few high fives. Um, anyways, we want you guys to email us at superbscast at gmail.com. That's super, S U P E R B S, cast at gmail.com and so we want to hear super and then s-u-p-e-r is that just how you spell super oh my god oh. s-u-p-e-r <laughs> b-s-c-a-s-t at at symbol okay. gmail.com and we did it reggie you said we couldn't do it you dumb a um that's reggie uh the president of nintendo america um anything you guys want to <laughs> add before we oh, I was just gonna ask that. <laughs> he's listening man he's one of the listeners uh anything you guys want to add before we go um, who made these cookies? Oh, yeah.
that's uh, to us people that can feel things, it, it, uh, it hurts.